Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today we're going to have a discussion related to one of the things that we talk most about this channel, which is of course where to relocate or uh, relocation in general. And in specific, I'm going to talk about the best place in the world to live. So maybe before we get into that and I get into a few other details that might be relevant to you, I would love to hear from you uh, what you would say is the best place in the world to live and why. Put it in the comments below and we'll, uh, we'll compare notes what, uh, what different people have to say. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. Now before we go on, I am here today in uh, beautiful uh, Park City, Utah. So for those of you who have not been, very nice. It's super convenient to the mountains. Uh, let's see, we can go and show you guys here. So you have all these ski resorts. It's literally like you know, your five minute drive from a ski resort, which means also a five minute drive from hiking and you know mountain biking and snowmobiling and all these other cool things. So very nice, as well as being very close to Salt Lake City, which has actually a remarkably great airport, uh, well connected, etc. And you know, a lot of city conveniences. So pretty, pretty unique place uh, in the US, and I would say even pretty unique in the world. Anyway, uh, check it out sometime if you get a chance. Definitely, definitely worth it. Before we get started, before we do, if you don't already smash the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell, put your uh, little notifications on so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Like the video if you like it, appreciate your support. If you have questions or you know comments, please let me know. If you'd like help, please reach out to us. You can book a call calendar.com forward slash michael-rosmer. We have a link in the description below and you can send a message to our websites offshorecitizen.net or offshorecapitalist.com. All right, so uh, lots of the times here on this channel, we're talking about protection, keeping more money, you know, not getting sued, uh, avoiding kind of problems with government, etc. And these are all important, but what I often tell people, clients will call me up and they'll want to know, you know, where to live or where to go or something like that. And what I often tell them and I think is very true, is that I can give you the math equation on, you know, where taxes are best, where you'll save the most money, where the cost of living is lowest, whatever. But then there's a values lifestyle side of it, which is really important, right? At the end of the day, why are we here? Hopefully, you know, why are we making money? Hopefully to make, uh, make our lives better and the lives of others better. And so if you make your life worse in order to try and save money, it's kind of contradictory, right? And so today I'm going to talk mostly about uh, the side of things with respect to kind of personal values. And this is obviously deeply personal to any individual. Uh, however, I will combine a little bit of some of what we talk about with respect to tax and relocation, etc. And so I'll maybe set the stage with an idea that I had a mental model from years ago that I still like to apply. And this is Imagine that you're an alien, you have no ties to any particular place on earth, and you come here for the first time, and you're put in a position where you get to choose wherever you want to go. Where do you want to live? Where do you choose? And I often tell people wherever that place would be, if you were, had no attachments, etc., no limitation on resources, that's probably where you should go live. Because why wouldn't you, you know? Life is pretty short, why wouldn't we make the most of it? Why wouldn't we go out to a place that uh, has the things that we want. And these things are different for every person. So I would say that in general, it's more common that people like good weather than bad weather, or rather warm weather than cold weather. However, I have some clients who don't like the really hot weather. They would rather go to the cooler climates. They'll go and spend time in places like Ireland or Switzerland or Canada, or, you know, uh, maybe they're going to Montana or Wyoming or, you know, places that are not necessarily so hot. And then there's other people who, you know, for them, they like jungles, other people like cities, et cetera, et cetera, right? So everybody has a unique set of things. So I asked you at the beginning where you consider to be the best place in the world. And I do think it's personal. I'm going to, for me, say, and I think this is a spoiler, and I think it should factor into how we consider our global strategies and we're planning ourselves, whether you know, you're a digital nomad or an investor or an entrepreneur or something, is that there is no perfect place, there are only perfect places. What do I mean by this? Maybe I like, you know, I live in Dubai for part of the year. Dubai part of the year is wonderful. 
uh, it's unbearably hot at this time of the year and throughout the summer, in particular, kind of August, September, maybe say July, August, September. And so I have zero interest in being in Dubai. So right now I'm not in Dubai, right? So would I say that Dubai is the perfect place? Well, not all year round, right? Um, on the other hand, you know, I love some place like Japan, amazing place, right? Beautiful country, so like different in terms of the culture, such like wonderful people, great food, lots to love, right? On the other hand, I don't really think I'd want to live in Japan uh, full time. And there's a lot of places like this. I remember when I first started spending time in Latin America, uh, I lived three winters in Costa Rica and was in a bunch of these places. And I really liked the weather. I liked certain things about it. And I was kind of thinking like, where's the perfect place to live? And one of the things I disliked was they spoke Spanish. I never really learned much Spanish. And I told myself, you know what, if it was the perfect place, I would learn the language because it would be worth it. But that's the only thing that is not perfect. I can learn the language. It's just a question of time and investment. It's not a big deal. And I would say something is probably similar for cost. If the perfect place is a bit more expensive, it's a small price to pay for, you know, your life. But on the other hand, if it turns out that, uh, that it's not a perfect place and you're having trade-offs, which is probably the more realistic thing in life, well then, what do we do? And I'm reminded of an expression that uh, when I lived in Vancouver, in Canada, I would hear people say, they'd be like, when's it, uh, is it summer yet? And they'd say, well, come on guys, it's summer somewhere. <laughs> You know, it's summer somewhere, so you can go somewhere that it is nice. And so the thing that I would advocate, and I advocate for myself and for others, is that I think it's extraordinarily good to live in multiple parts of the world. Not just because of the fact that, yeah, okay, you probably get some tax benefits from that. Yeah, okay, you may get some cost of living benefits from it. Yeah, okay, you may get some, you know, social connection benefits from it. But it's also just that because there's no perfect place, you can build a better life by mixing and matching the good about certain places so that you get the best of a lot of them and give up the bad of a lot of them or the things that you dislike. And so for me, the thing that I'm very interested in is, is that, right? Is spreading my time throughout the world. Now, obviously this doesn't have to be the case for everybody. Some people would love to be in one place and they're perfectly happy with that and off they go. Uh, but I think that this is for most people probably a better way to live. And so I would encourage you, instead of thinking about, you know, where should I go get residency? Where should I go live? Although you're probably going to have to get a residency permit somewhere and maybe a couple of them. And, you know, there's nice, I've talked to lots of people, I'm an advocate for the diversification and the security that you get from having residencies in multiple countries, citizenships in multiple countries, banking in multiple countries, etc. In spite of that, I think just from a personal lifestyle standpoint, it makes an enormous amount of sense to think about, hey, here's a place that I love at X time. You know, this is June in uh, Park City. It's wonderful, love it. Uh, I think I would happily spend the month of June in, uh, in Park City. There's some other places in the world that I would happily spend a month, maybe two months, maybe four months, uh, but not all year round. When I was in Seychelles a little while ago, I was mentioning about the minimum stay requirements to maintain residency there. And Seychelles, absolutely beautiful. Would I want to be there all year round? Absolutely not. Would I love to be there for a year? Yeah, or sorry, not a year. Uh, a month a year? Yeah, like I think that's great. So I would encourage you to think that way. Like instead of, and there was a, a great uh, Malcolm Gladwell talk on TED where he talked about this. He told the story, I think it's in the book, What the Dog Saw, about the guy trying to come up with the perfect pizza sauce. And he discovered there's no perfect pizza sauce, there's only perfect sauces. And, or I think it was maybe there's no perfect Pepsi, there's only perfect Pepsis and talking about how, you know, you have to have a plurality of options in order to really hit the sweet spot. And I think that's true with where we live as much as it is for other places. So I'd love to hear what some of the places that really stand out for you are. Maybe it's not a perfect place for you, but you think, hey, here's three, four places that you would love to be in and what it is that you like about them. And if I haven't been there, I'd love to go check them out. And maybe some other people will too. And yeah. I hope forward, uh, look forward to seeing you guys' comments and we will talk to you on the next video.